Well, hi, Bill. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today to talk about your experience with JumpLab. Before we get going, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your MSP? Sure. Um, my name is Bill Oliver. I'm a senior systems engineer here with uh, CVM. Uh, we are a mostly regional uh, MSP or value-added reseller provider for uh, the Northeast in the U.S. Um, been in business for 30 years. I've been involved with CVM for the last five, but I've been in IT um, professionally for 30 years. But if you count the years when I was just that know-it-all kid, you got to add another 15 or 20 years uh, to that. So I've been, you know, I've been around a while. Uh, seen lots of things, and um, we, we tend to focus here at CVM on value for customers, and that ranges from whatever size customer that we have and whatever that particular engagement might be. Yeah, that's great, and uh, you are just reminded me, I'm um, as of July this year, it's my 35th anniversary since I started in the industry, my first job, and um, I guess like me, you've seen an awful lot of changes since then, because I started programming mini mini computers and then uh, Xenix and Unix and NetWare and uh, Windows and, T to where we, to, and then to the cloud. So yeah, there's been quite a lot of sort of transformational changes in that time, but we're, we're still here, right? Which is good. That's right. That's right. We keep, we, we, if, you do, if you don't ride the wave, you'll get bowled over. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, hopefully we'll con continue, although hopefully not for that much longer. <laughs> we can <laughs> right. get out at some point. So um, thinking about your relationship with JumpCloud, how did you initially hear about us? I, I, um, I'm not sure where it first came, you know, some kind of search or a frustration with um, an Active Directory problem I ran into, and, and I just saw some notice or a posting about a um, cloud-based directory service, and that sort of started a conversation. And one of our clients, uh, one that I work with regu on regularly, um, we have a, a long-term relationship and we were just chatting about the issue. And I said, um, you know, I've been looking at this thing that lets us possibly abandon the active directory. And he said, are you talking about jump cloud? And I said, yeah, jump cloud. How did you hear about it? And so um, that's sort of where it started for us is, is just looking at it together and thinking about if we did this, what would it be? Could we do it? And uh, what will we get out of it? And so it came from trying to sort of address a, pr a problem at a particular client. That's sort of where the interest came from. And that, that's really where it, where it originated. Uh, yeah, you know, we, this client and I, we we have experienced frustrations with Active Directory from time to time. Okay, and just um, I guess not specifically that client, but just thinking about the frustrations. I mean, is if, has that sort of increased as more and more people are sort of working remotely or is, is Active Directory historically on premise and start to move to the cloud? Has that sort of caused issues? Well, so uh, I think I think you, you hit the nail on the head. For us, it became noticeable. And this is not just this particular client. At the time of, of the pandemics forced people to work remotely and it accelerated what I think was happening anyway, but it, it made us stop and address some of the things that we assumed in terms of device management and user management that you would always be able to do because people and devices were in the office were no longer possible because they weren't permanently connected to the network anymore. Yeah, and absolutely. And are you a sort of a, a predominantly, apart from the Active Directory side, Microsoft House, or do you work with Google and Apple or different, or is it is it a mixture of everything? So um, at CVM, we, we focus mostly on infrastructure. So uh, for us, VMware and networking, and for a lot of our clients, it is almost exclusively Microsoft and or Linux-based deployments. Um, there are now probably a handful of the Google um, uh, deployments as well for, for those advanced services. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting to know. So I'm thinking about the usage of Jump Cloud within your clients. I mean, which obviously Jump Cloud has expanded over the years. I've only been with the company for sort of 18 months and it's, it seems with new features added all the time. So are you kind of using lots of the core features like identity access management or some of the newer features like the remote assist and the password manager or use somewhere in between? So we are now in month number seven of our Jump Cloud partnership. So we are brand new. And I agree with you, the, the amount of change and growth in the product in just our window has been 
impressive. And um, we started this with the notion that we would get to a full suite deployment, but we're doing this two at a time. And it is for the identity and access management that's starting this. Um, we needed a way to get uh, MFA deployed quickly at that large client. Um, now we're at the phase where, based on our bundle that we're using, we can get them password manager, which was not in the, the cards or the plan at the beginning. So I really do uh, think that when we reach our one year anniversary, we will have every tool deployed at least somewhere where we're using every feature in Jump Club. Wow, that's amazing. And I don't know if you saw, we recently did the product partner roadmap webinar, which is um, we're kind of launching new stuff all the time, uh, which is really exciting. Yeah. yeah, I don't miss them now. I uh, <laughs> I make sure I make sure I register. And if I can't be in attendance, I'll, I'll catch the recording. Yeah, that's great to hear. I'll pass that on to the team. And I, and I watch them as well for the same reason, because mm -hmm. sometimes even things internally get, you know, get missed. There's so much stuff happening. And the team, the team is so focused on MSP now in sort of trying to create as many sort of tools to, to get to this. And uh, I, I suspect you've heard this phrase as many times as I have in, in our just in our careers, this sort of single pane of glass to try and get everything right. into one place. And that's right. what we're working towards. So um, on to the next section, um, you've been with Jump Cloud sort of relatively short amount of time. And I guess, um, I don't know whether you've kind of, how that's been, how the onboarding's been and everything, but if you're thinking of, or talking to a new MSP now or an MSP friend at an event or something, what advice would you give give them if they were starting out with Jump Cloud? Uh, first thing, go through the Jump Cloud University. That is an amazing uh, place. In, in, follow the certification track, whatever you need, but the courses are there to give you an, an understanding and a good framework. The next thing is to understand where the value would come for your client because it's in there. It's definitely a, a, a great tool. Um, we, are, we are struggling at some clients with remote assist needs because we can't do VNC anymore. We, we don't really have a good tool that does remote control or support for users that are disconnected. Well, this is built in. Um, we need to do some kind of inventory control. This is built in. Uh, we need a password manager. This is built in. There are real value opportunities that you can present those to your clients as a new MSP. Understand their pain points and set, describe these in terms of uh, good value propositions yeah fantastic that's hope that's um really nice to hear and um yeah i mean we I would agree with all of that that's uh, that's that's um solid advice so moving on to the kind of almost the end we've got a question on the industry which i'm looking forward to this because i guess you've been in the industry as long as i have so i mean do you do you i mean well i guess taking a step back a typical you mentioned you're on more on the infrastructure side potentially but um, are you seeing that MSP's um, role is growing within the sort of SME community? And are you kind of generally working with IT departments to augment them? Or are you, or are you acting more as the, an IT department for an organization that doesn't have IT staff? Yeah. So um, CVM, we have three types of clients um, that start at the top would be the large customers where um, we are an adjunct to their IT department. Um, we're there to help guide, advise, provide responses to specific projects or do their infrastructure piece at them. Um, so that's steady, consistent growth. You identify that relationship and try to make it long term. Um, we have a at the other end, the clients who we um, we, we maintain a data center here, full, fully SOC compliant data center in our offices. And for those clients, we host or provide that in infrastructure. Um, so then in the middle is the other group of clients where we are the MSP for those and do that support. And I think that need is only going to grow. Um, and this is, this is, you know, like, like you said, we're a bit long in the tooth. We've seen this before. Um, technology is evolving quickly and it is always complex to the user. Because for most people, technology is not their business. Um, 
they need to focus on what the business is and let us advise them how to use technology to achieve their objectives. And in the, the small and medium enterprise environment, they can't afford to keep the technologists around to do all of those functions. You really need uh, um, to have the expert. Mm -hmm. And if I use this, I, I used to tell the story, and this is not the way we do it anymore, but but uh, yeah, uh, installing Microsoft Exchange, or let's just say setting up an email server for an, an organization. If, if you work at that organization, you're probably going to do this once, maybe twice in your career. If you work and uh, with us at CVM, we're going to do this once or twice a quarter for another customer. We are always doing this. We always know what the issues are. We always are going to be experts at it. We'll be better. So bring us in to help you do those kinds of things. And that's true across the gamut now, especially with the diversity of technology, cloud access and uh, firewalls and ransomware threats and all of the things. And what is an endpoint detection response system? All of those components require some kind of IT expertise that you cannot get at an SME. And so there's no doubt in my mind that market is, is going to grow. Yeah, and I'm not too proud to admit that's something that I, a few years ago, got completely wrong. I misread the situation, thinking that mm -hmm. as things started to move to the cloud and say, rather than configuring Exchange servers, a, a user could go to Microsoft and set up an email account or Google. And then the same with file storage, with SharePoint or Google Drive or whatever. I kind of thought at the time that that might in the future bring problems for MSPs because a lot of their kind of the legacy MSP business like installing Exchange and SQL was disappearing but it turns out I got it completely the wrong way around it's, it's made it even though the on the face of it the things are getting simpler the actual requirement for the MSP to tie it all together and then you start to add security in and those things like that it's, it's becoming much more necessary for SMEs to use uh, outsourced MSPs than it was before. So I'm, I'm not too proud to admit I got that completely wrong. Well, I listen, I want to say I agree with you because you the, the initial wave was, you're absolutely right. If, if, we, if we were only focused on a file share and file permissions and email and internet access, I don't, you don't need me for that. Those things you can take care of. After a week though, you're going to wonder, why do I have so much spam? Why did, how come I can't uh, get the backups working? Uh, all of the other pieces are necessary to make that work for the business become more complex when you are less connected. And that means, yeah, you're right. It, it, the MSP environment has grown significantly because of that. And are you finding that the clients are more sort of security savvy now? Are they, are they coming to you with security concerns or, or is it, when you're speaking to them about security, they're more receptive to it than maybe just a few years ago. Um, I so so can I say both? Um, do, because because that really has been what I've seen. We have some clients who have said um, because they are friends with another co customer or some other business, and they said, "Hey, I, this person got attacked. I don't want it to happen to me. Can we talk about security for us?" That has happened. We had the, the other extreme where, unfortunately, they had an incident. And um, they said, can you guys come and clean this up for us? Um, and we need to know more about security. And then we've had the ones where we say, listen, we've had a good relationship. You guys haven't addressed certain things. We need to make you aware that there are these security concerns. And if, if you don't address them, you're going to have problems getting cyber insurance. You're going to have, um, and, and unavoidably, there's going to be an incident. Something will happen to you that we have to address. And I think security is becoming much more of an easier, sell is the wrong word, but I, 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 don't, I don't know the, the, a better choice of, of terms, uh, a much easier topic to approach with clients. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that's what we're hearing. And when I'm speaking to Jump Cloud partners like yourself, I'm kind of hearing the same from everyone that it's becoming more newsworthy in the UK, which is where I am now. There's been a huge cyber breach at schools and mm. air airlines and everything just this week. And that's making mainstream news and sort of, you know, nine o'clock TV news. And I guess that's kind of filtering down to, to SMEs. Yeah. So I think that's that's all helping and hopefully raising awareness, which is 
which is what we all want. So that's uh, hopefully that's going to carry on. Right. I think so. I think you're right. Okay. Well, uh, that's all I've got for today. That's time. I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Really appreciate it. And thanks for being a, a Jump Cloud partner. Uh, I know relatively new, but hopefully it's a, it's a very long-term relationship we've got going. Keep an eye on the roadmap videos, and hopefully you'll see some of the feature requests that you've put in start to appear in there uh, in the not-too-distant future. So again, thanks for your time, and uh, good luck for the future, for the next 30 years, maybe. We'll see how long it goes. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. It's been a great talk.